This MateBook D laptop looks and feels as premium as a MacBook Pro, but it's rocking Windows 10, a graphics card for us PC gamers, and it only costs around 600 bucks. Is it too good to be true though? We're about to find out. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be checking out the Huawei MateBook D budget gaming, but also kind of premium laptop and seeing if it's worth your money. And if you wanna see more laptop reviews or PC gaming videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode, but yeah. Let's check this thing out. The MateBook D laptop is made by a Chinese company called Huawei, and you may already be familiar with them because of their products that really resemble some Apple products like the iPhones. In my opinion, the company isn't super popular here in the United States yet, but by looking at this laptop, you definitely think that they should be. This MateBook D looks and feels just like a MacBook Pro, and I was truly blown away by the overall quality and looks of this laptop at such a budget price. The specific model we're looking at today is rocking a 4 core 8 thread i5 8250U processor that boosts up to 3.4 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a 2 gigabyte MX150 graphics chip, which you know will benchmark later on in this video, and it has a one terabyte hard disk drive. This specific model isn't rocking an M.2 SSD, although you can pay a little bit extra and get a 128 gigabyte SSD in there. I would definitely recommend that if you can afford that, and I'll have all the links down in the description for the different models. Huawei also recently released a full AM AMD version of the MateBook D with a Ryzen 5 2500U which includes built-in Vega graphics, but that one isn't available yet on the US Amazon store FYI. Moving on, the MateBook D is super thin with a height of only 169 millimeters, and the screen is a 15.6 inch 1080p 60Hz IPS panel which I'm a huge fan of because of the really nice colors and the matte finish. After recording footage for a bunch of laptops with glossy screens, I definitely appreciate the non-glare matte screen and I honestly think I'll continue continue buying laptops like this from here on out. Continuing on the physical tour, the laptop is made of an almost all metal design which is super sturdy and really has a premium feeling build quality to it. The hinge feels super smooth and stable and there's basically no flex at all around the keyboard. The only plastic part is the super small bezels around the screen, but I personally think that the two-tone design looks pretty cool. The touchpad looks really nice and works decently, but it doesn't feel amazing or anything and I didn't get too excited about it. I'm not a huge fan about how the travel distance is different from the top of the trackpad compared to the bottom of it. I also have the same opinion about the keyboard. The keys feel pretty decent and there is some tactile click to it, but they didn't blow me away or anything. On the left side of the laptop is a charging port which is positioned perfectly unlike some other laptops lately that are plugged in the right side where you would put your mouse and mouse pad. There's also a full size HDMI port, two USB type A's, and a headphone jack. I would have liked to see some USB type C ports on there, but there are some drawbacks at such a budget a price like this. The MateBook X does include some USB type C ports, but that's a much more expensive version of this laptop, just in case if you're interested in that. And finally, on the opposite side of the laptop is just one single USB type A port. Going back to the charging port that I said I like, I actually really like the charging cable that it comes with. The only brick part of it is up here at the end where you plug it in and it's positioned horizontally so it won't take up another power port. I really like this because now the cable is super clean and there's no massive brick in the middle of it. There are two speakers on the bottom of the MateBook D, which definitely isn't an ideal location, but trust me, these are the best speakers I've ever heard on a laptop to date. Now keep in mind, I don't review that many laptops on this channel, but I was seriously blown away by how these super small speakers sound. They get way louder than I thought they would. The bass isn't that great, obviously, but seriously, they sound really good. And finally, before getting into the actual performance of the laptop, there is a bit of upgradability, but it all depends on which model you get. There's one 2.5 inch hard drive slot in a single M.2 slot, and I would personally recommend throwing one in there because it'll be much faster. There's also two RAM slots on there, so you technically could upgrade these to eight gigabytes each instead of four, but I really don't think it's worth it. All right, so moving on to how this thing actually 
performs, it's definitely very impressive for how much this laptop costs. Usually laptops at this price point don't come with dedicated graphics chips in there. They usually use Intel's built-in graphics or AMD's built-in Vega graphics, but the budget Nvidia MX150 performs absolutely perfectly at this price point. I'll have a full dedicated video benchmarking and reviewing the Nvidia MX150. Make sure you're subscribed for that, but here are a few benchmarks if you're thinking about picking up this laptop right now for gaming. On a super easy to run game like Counter-Strike Global Offensive, it averaged 101 frames per second. On the fan favorite Fortnite in 1080p and low, it averaged 77 FPS. And as you can see on a very hard to run Far Cry 5, even in 900p, it only averaged just over 30 FPS. Obviously the 8250U and the MX150 aren't super powerful and they're not gonna crush any benchmarking records or anything. But if you're looking for a budget laptop that can at least allow you to play PC games, then it's a pretty good combo. Some other things to note about gaming is that the top of the laptop definitely got very hot towards the middle, but it surprisingly wasn't nearly as hot on the bottom. There's a huge vent at the bottom, which certainly helps with keeping the laptop cool, but just make sure that you have the laptop resting on something flat so it's sitting on those raised rubber feet for airflow. There's also some major coil wind when playing the harder to run games. I wouldn't say it's super loud and it's definitely not annoying or anything, but the sound is definitely there. Moving on, just like with any laptop with an Nvidia graphics chip in it, the laptop will automatically switch to the Intel UHD 620 graphics when it's not playing a game or anything demanding to save battery life. And there's also minimal bloatware that it comes with, which is a nice touch. Overall, for around 600 bucks, the MateBook D has some pretty insane value if you're looking for a budget gaming laptop that looks and feels as premium as a MacBook Pro. If you're looking for a laptop that looks like the MacBook Pro, but has Windows instead of Mac OS, and it can actually game decently well, then this is a perfect laptop for you. Well, that wraps up my review of the budget Huawei MateBook D laptop. Like I said earlier, make sure you're subscribed to see the full MX150 benchmarking video because I'll be benchmarking a ton of games with this laptop. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. And as always, thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.